Hi, Kevin here. Today I wanted to show you how to make rosettes. Now, rosettes are deep fried cookies. They are super crisp, super light, and super delicious. My grandmother used to make them every year at Christmas time, and when I was a kid, I used to eat way too many of them. And all you need to make the rosettes is a very simple batter and a rosette iron. Now, my iron has two molds attached to it, uh, but you can buy an iron that has just one mold. And you can buy the irons at kitchen supply stores and from Amazon. All right, here's how to make the batter. All right, the batter, as I said, is super simple to make. What you need are two large eggs. And I'm going to just whisk these very lightly. Then add one tablespoon of regular granulated sugar and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Give this a quick whisk. This is really like making a crepe batter. Then you want to add one cup of milk. And I'm going to add about a third of the milk at first. And I'm going to add one cup of sifted flour. And I'm going to add about a third of that. And you whisk that together. The idea here is that we're trying to avoid uh, lumps in the batter as much as possible. And then add a little more of the milk, another third, another third of the flour. Whisk. And then the remaining milk and the remaining flour. And I will be chilling this batter because according to the directions that came with my rosette iron, uh, the chilled batter produces the crispiest rosettes. Okay, we're looking good here. And the final ingredient is one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. Now, if you don't want to use vanilla, you could use almond extract or, I don't know, lemon extract would be wonderful, I should think. Okay, the batter is done. So what I'm going to do is cover this with plastic wrap. Then I'm going to pop this into the fridge for about two hours. And then when we come back, we can make the rosette cookies. All right, my batter has been chilling in the refrigerator for, well, more than two hours because I had a really busy afternoon. So now I'm going to give it a quick whisk. Yeah, now most of the lumps that were in the batter have dissolved. And if you have a few lumps in the batter, that doesn't really matter at all. Okay, you just really don't want to overbeat this according to the directions that came with my Nifty Rosette and Ten Ball set. And I wanted to show you, uh, that while my oil is heating to 350 degrees, let me show you how this uh, Ten Ball iron works. So, I've got two prongs here, and these little molds just screw on. And so I have this rosette-shaped mold, 
and I have the star mold. There it is. And then there's this geometric shaped mold. It also came with these tempa pieces. So these actually form little cups. Here's a little heart-shaped cup. Here's a round cup. And you could use these to make oh, little cups for cocktail parties. You could fill them with, I don't know, sour cream and caviar. Okay, so I wanted to show you that, oops, how these screw in very easily especially if you're not doing it on camera. There we go. Okay. And then I have a baking sheet lined with a flour sack towel because it's great for absorbing grease. You, of course, could use paper towels like most people do. I'm just avoiding paper towels these days. Okay. And I'm going to pour my batter into this shallow baking dish here. This way it will be easy for me to stick the mold, well, what do you call this, the, the rosette iron gadget into the batter. Okay, now we're going to move over to the stovetop. All right, so I have about an inch and a half or two inches of canola oil in this skillet. Let's check the temperature. So we're aiming for 350 degrees. To 314, 325. Yeah, I like these digital thermometers. Okay. So we're almost there. And I have my batter over here. And my iron all ready to go. And I'm going to stick the iron in the skillet. And I'm going to set the handle of the iron against the handle of the skillet. Can you even see? That way the iron will sit flat. And you do want to heat this iron. It's got to be really hot when it touches the batter. Move you out a little bit. Check the temperature again. We are at three. Okay, great. We're at 354, and you do want the oil to be somewhere between 350 and, say, 365. When I made a batch of rosettes last night, uh, I heated the oil to 375, and I thought that was way too hot, because the first rosettes I made turned a little too brown. They were still delicious, but, yeah, they shouldn't be that brown. Okay. Now, I'm going to let these heat for another minute, and then I'll come right back. Okay, I think we're ready to roll here. Now you want to shake off any excess oil from the iron. And then, I'm going to try to zoom you in so you can see the batter. Now, when you dip the mold into the batter, you only want to go up part way, like seven-eighths of the way. And you should hear the batter sizzle. Okay, shake off excess batter. See, I didn't come over the top of the mold. And then, get ready. Here it is. Oh, you can't even see. Move you out. We are sizzling away. Now, the rosettes should fall off of the mold. And if, the, if it doesn't, help it along with a chopstick like that. A 
flip. Oh, these are beautiful. Okay, and they're already done. So I just use a chopstick. And then I transfer the rosettes to the towel lined baking sheet. Okay, let's do a couple more. I'm going to put this in here. You do not have to heat the iron every single time you go to make a rosette, but you want to make sure that the iron is hot. And these are actually, once you get the hang of it, these rosettes are really fun to make. They don't take long at all. And the, I made these uh, batch last night, and I got at least 40 rosettes out of that batter. Okay, dipping it in the batter now. So I'm going to blot this on the cloth. Good, it's sizzling. Shake off the excess. And into the oil. And I keep my chopstick handy, just in case I have to help the rosettes to release themselves. There's one off. There's two. Oops. I'll go over here. You always want to shake off the excess oil from the iron so you're not adding oil to the batter. These are done. It might be a little too brown, but that's okay. Put them over here. And when you put them on the baking sheet to drain, you want to set them so that the public side is up. The other side is hollow. And if you turn that upside down on the baking sheet, it will just keep absorbing grease. I keep forgetting to put my iron back into the oil. Okay, I'm going to continue doing these, and then I'll come back. Actually, I'm going to try to do four. Here's two. Oh good, we fell off right away. At least the star one fell off. It didn't fall off, it dislodged itself. Now I'm gonna quickly re-dip. And into the oil. See if these will come off just with a little shaking. Yes. I'm going to keep this iron in the hot oil. Look at how quickly these cook. And then onto the baking sheet to drain. Yeah, these are really easy to lift with just a chopstick. They're also easy to flip over. Yeah, these are definitely done. And I did lower the heat so my oil doesn't get too hot. And actually, I might as well talk with you while I do a few more. Um, I did order a candy thermometer that attaches to the side of the skillet. I ordered it from uh, Amazon. And I opened it last night, planning to use it, and the darn thing was cracked. And I didn't know. I ordered it probably six months ago, so I think it's too late to return it. So then I ordered another one today from a different manufacturer. Look at this. Oh, these are so fun to do, you guys. Fun to make and fun to eat. So here are the ones I've made so far. 
out. Flip these over. Okay, great. So my oil has cooled a bit. That's good. These are not quite as bronze colored. But it doesn't matter. Even if they're a little too brown, they are still absolutely delicious. This is going to be another one of my too long videos, but I'm just having a good time sharing this process with you. Again, this is something I loved so much when I was a kid. And I'm delighted to be able to make them myself now that I'm not a kid. All right, I'm going to finish frying these and then I'll come back. All right, we're on the last uh, we're on the last rosettes now. And everything is working out swimmingly well. Look how many I've made. So these were the first ones. They're really dark, but absolutely delicious. Here are the later ones after I lowered the heat. They're lighter in color, but just as wonderful as the first batch. And it's just amazing how quickly these cook. Actually, I should say how quickly they fry. So you just want to make sure that your oil is at the correct temperature. Let's see if I can get one more, or rather two more rosettes out of this. And I'm just blotting my iron there and then into the oil. Yeah, you certainly don't need much batter on this iron. And again, you do not want the batter to come up over the uh, top of the molds because then the, the batter will stick. It will make a big mess. Look, oh, just beautiful. And we are done. Okay. Turn off the heat. Now this oil, when it cools, can be strained and reused. All right, I'll come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do with the rosettes. All right, so here are the rosettes. and the stars that I made just now. And here are the rosettes and stars that I made last night. Now, when they're cool, you can put them on a platter. Oops. Sorry about all the noise. And then give them a sprinkling of confectioner sugar. Hold on, I have to grab my sugar. All right, so you want these to look like snow just fell upon them. Now, if your rosettes are warm, you can uh, dip them into cinnamon and sugar. That's always really lovely. But if you're going to top them with confectioner sugar, you definitely want them to cool first. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Of course, I have to have a taste for you. Yeah, I think a video is always disappointing if the cook or the baker doesn't try his or her own work. So, here we go. It 
tastes like a smile, okay? I'm going to finish this. I'll be right back. You guys, these are so incredibly wonderful. The only problem is you really can't eat just one. So I hope you will consider making these rosettes. Uh, oh, and I meant to tell you that rosettes are called benuelos in Mexico. And I think they're served the year round in Mexico. They're not just Christmas items. So yeah, please give these a try. I will put the batter ingredients in the description box below. And what else? Um, oh, and I'll put a link for the rosette and tembal set that I purchased, although you don't have to buy this one. Just look on Amazon or look in your local kitchen supply store. These things are not at all expensive, probably 20 bucks at the most. And uh, yeah, and give these a try. They're really fun to do. And that's all for now. I'm going to try not to eat all of these. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.